Hi, I'm Ed Hicks. I'm Dave Corderwood and we're here at Popham for the Microlite Trade Fair. Fantastic weather, lots of people here, lots of aeroplanes. I guess we should go and look around. We should. Hi, I'm, uh, I'm here with uh, Ashok Alisherul of uh, Skyleader in the UK. Uh, Ashok, are you having a great popham? Yeah, yeah, so far it's been good, a great show, and the weather's uh, luckily been good, kind to us today. <laughs> Fantastic. So you're obviously importing the two models of Skyleader into the UK, uh, the 600 and the 400. Can you tell us a bit about those aeroplanes? Yeah, so the Skyleader is uh, manufactured by uh, Jihlavan Airplanes in Czech Republic, and the 400 and 600 are their models that's been sold in Europe for many years, and now that we've opened up the 600 kilogram category in the UK, we can bring them over. Uh, so we are bringing the 400 and 600. The 400 is more of a, a basic trainer aircraft, really easy to fly. You can have a Rotax 100 horse or 80 horse, fixed pitch prop, and um, it's really easy handling with a robust landing gear, ideal for flight schools. Uh, the 600 is more targeted towards the uh, private buyer who would like a bit more speed, a bit more equipment. So you have the option of uh, 912 IS, constant speed prop, and the retractable undercarriage. So it can cruise quite fast, 125 knot cruise, uh, on just on a 100 horse engine. So it is quite a high performance aircraft in that respect. Um, and, um, and the cabin space, so it's much big, bigger cabin. Uh, so really spacious interior for, on the 600. So these are quite, you know, really good aircraft in, in the, you know, coming to the UK for the first time because of this new category that's opened up. It's quite robust, easy to maintain. I myself am a bit aircraft builder and I've built a metal aircraft so I know how it is in terms of maintenance and day-to-day -day living with an aircraft so I think these are perfect in that respect. I'm here with John Waite um, of the Exodus aircraft. Exodus aircraft and we're going to have a quick look at the Delta Jet 500 Stingray. John, can you tell us what the position is with this aircraft at the moment? Well, the position at the moment is that it's uh, now on sale in the UK. Uh, it was introduced about a year ago. Uh, and in our first year we've produced, uh, we've got orders for 20 and we're now producing the 11th and 12th aircraft in St Albans. And this one is fitted with a BMW motorcycle engine. What, what's the benefit there? I think, uh, well, a primary benefit for many people is that it's uh, six or seven thousand pounds cheaper than the Rotax 912. So there's no denying that that's you know, a, a big attraction for a lot of people. But the other thing is it, it essentially performs very, very similarly to the Rotax 912S. So in terms of climb performance, uh, cruise and fuel economy, there's really very little to choose between them. How are you doing in terms of approvals uh, for uh, bringing the aeroplanes into the country? So in approvals, um, obviously because of this new category being open, uh, a lot of manufacturers are queuing up uh, to get their approvals. Uh, luckily we managed to get a kind of ahead of the queue. The CAA have looked, started looking at our uh, manufacturer approval, the A8, A8 approvals from February. And even though we haven't got a promised date, we expect that to be pretty soon. And in terms of type approvals, the BMAA will be doing both aircraft, the 400 and 600. And they've promised about three months to do each aircraft. So we expect kind of August, September timeline when the first demonstrator arrives, uh, the approvals to be in place. Fantastic. And, uh, and what sort of prices are we looking at for the two aircraft? So the Skyleader 400, uh, a, a basic VFR equipped version, you're looking about £90,000 plus VAT. Uh, obviously, it's subject to slight exchange rate fluctuations. Um, and the 600, it's about 100000 plus VAT uh, for a basic equipped version. Fantastic. Ashok, thanks very much for talking to us and uh, good luck with uh, the aircraft. Yeah, thanks, uh, thanks, Ed. Thanks for your time. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> so, the BMW engine looks fabulous, by the way. It really fits into the aircraft very well. It's, it's lovely. It's very compact. It, uh, it seems to suit the aircraft. And they've been flying it on a constant for about 15 years. So, it's, there's a lot of heritage behind it. It's not just an, an unproven concept. They've done uh, a lot of flying behind it there and they've got examples with 2,000 hours, so it seems to be reliable. What are the other features of this particular FlexWing Microlite? I guess the other standout feature is its, uh, its weight 
capacity, so it'll take 499. Both seats are rated to 120 kilos. Um, it's got a lot of um, space inside for touring, so it's great for, for touring. Uh, we'll be taking a fleet of about seven of these to Hungary this summer, going back to the factory to visit. So I guess that's a standout feature in terms of um, touring. And in terms of characteristics for flight, it's uh, very light in roll and pitch, uh, but it's got uh, a good hands-off uh, speed range, and it's uh, a topless wing, so you get uh, a nice speed range and good handling and turbulence. What sort of performance are we talking about here in terms of uh, speed and uh, takeoff and landing? Um, we would sort of suggest that you come in at 65 for landing. In terms of speed, it's got a hands-off trim range of uh, just below 50 miles an hour to 90, 92 miles an hour. Um, flat out, not much more than that. You'll get 100 miles an hour out of it. Um, and it uh, stores around about 42 miles per hour. I see this is a customer aircraft. So if I was to put an order in today, what, was, what, was that, uh, what would that cost me? Uh, that one would cost you £40,000, but that includes a VAT. Right. Okay. Thanks very much, John. Cheers. Cheers. Right, so I'm here with Simon Tilling, new CEO of the Light Aircraft Association. You've been in the job, what, three weeks now, Simon? How, three weeks. How, how, how's it going? I love it. Um, I was just explaining to, um, to Ed, it's great to be, when your hobby is your job, because it's not your job anymore. So I was talking to the wife this morning saying I'm going to work, and she didn't believe me, but here I am, <laughs> working. So, no, it's great. So what do you think of, of this event? Have you got any takeaways yet? Um, well, first off, we arranged the weather, didn't we? It's really good, so that's great. Um, I, I think when I look around, when I look at all the different uh, aircraft, I think we're starting to look at what the future of light aviation is going to look like. So whilst we've got lots of old aircraft and we, we look after those, we also are looking after a lot of new aircraft and kits like this one here, for instance. You know, if we want to bring new people into aviation, I think this is the way we're going to do it. What are other priorities have you got in mind at the moment? So I think attracting um, more diverse membership, I think, is, is key. Bringing more young people into aviation. We need to think about not just the pilot owners, but the social members as well. You know, what, what does the LAA mean to them and how can we enhance what we offer those people as well? We need to be thinking about how we serve our members, how, what our customer service is like, uh, making sure that's as good as it can be and, and making sure everyone's having some fun out of it whether they're pilots owners inspectors we've got you know 300 odd inspectors out there that do, do inspections on behalf of the LAA so we need to make sure that they're with us on this journey that we're going to into the future yeah. and you're going to be back at Popham in August for the LAA grassroots uh, flying yeah uh, you're looking forward to that absolutely I mean this is my home airfield so it's great that's not why it's here by the way but um, <laughs> just coincidence um, yeah really looking Looking forward to it and and you know it's early in, in the season so we're still planning what we're going to be doing so anybody's got any ideas about what they'd like to see at the rally then get in touch with me okay well thanks for talking to us Simon have a great uh, great event my pleasure you have a good day as well thank, thank you. you I'm here with uh, Patricia and Jonathan Porter uh, of uh, Metal Seagulls and we're catching up on their Fafali aircraft design Jonathan Pat Patricia lovely to have you here uh, great weather how are you getting on fabulous it's all good isn't it Pat? yeah the weather looking good so yeah we we have nothing to complain about <laughs> fantastic so the Fafali aircraft um, earlier on in the year uh, you uh, well I guess it was late later last year wasn't it you unveiled a concept for a pusher airplane and we all went we all got excited about that but actually you've been working on as well as that a more simple tractor airplane haven't you can you tell us a bit about that absolutely so we did lots of surveys around the world of what people wanted in a factory built ready to fly aircraft and a lot of people they wanted greater visibility hence so there was a lot of work on the pusher but a lot of people also wanted to maintain the tractor for safety and we had to look at all of those needs of thousands of different people and where we were going to pull this together and we found that the sweet spot at this point is a 750 kilogram to later on a 1000 kilogram MTOM 
uh, aircraft with two seats and a 60 kilogram baggage area. And uh, I understand you've got a um, you've got big plans for developing production at your facility in Haverford West. Uh, Patricia, can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, for us, it has always been important that uh, giving young people opportunity and myself, for instance, when I started in aviation, how it was very difficult. So that at the back of our mind, we believe that, you know, giving young people the opportunity. So we're working that in Pembrokeshire at the moment, the young people are all leaving and moving into the, the urban areas because that's where they can get jobs from. And we very much believe that with our concept now and expanding our facilities and we plan that by 2035 we should be able to be making up to 50 aeroplanes which means we will have a factory giving young people that opportunity and we just can't wait and Gwen just goes to tell you you know you start them young and before you know it they'll be up there doing great things. So I'm here with uh, Steve Boxall of uh, Magni Aircraft in the UK and we're here with the very special Mag Magni M24 Plus. Steve can you tell us a bit about why this aeroplane is unique? Well, yes, so the Magni M24 Plus, the difference to the um, old M24 is it's got the new Rotax 915 engine with 142 horsepower. We've been selling those for a couple of years now in the UK. Um, I think this is the sixth one. The different thing about this one is it's equipped for night flying. So externally, we've got a big landing light and a heated pitot. Internally, we've got cabin lighting and instrument panel lighting. And we're currently doing the flight testing on it to get it approved for night flying in the UK. Fantastic. And what's the sort of timeline for, for that happening? We're getting through the flight testing at the moment. That's nearly complete. Um, and we're hoping to get the permit in the next month or two and obviously ready for the next night flying season um, next winter. And obviously uh, gyros with the 915 in, as the, the, the 915 has been a bit transformational, hasn't it, for the, the, for the gyro market? Is that where you're seeing the big sales? Yes. I mean, we're not really selling uh, any, certainly any M24s with the old 914 engine in. The performance of the Rotax 915 is transformational, as you said. Um, we can see much higher rates of climb. It's a really nice engine to operate. It's very, very smooth. Um, it's just a beautiful thing to have. Like for like, it uses less fuel, but of course we never fly like to like because we're like for like because we're always using that extra performance, particularly in the climb. Um, again, typically with the Rotax 914 in it, we'd see about 600 feet per minute in a Magni M24 at max all up weight. We're regularly seeing well over a thousand feet per minute um, and up to 1500 feet per minute when we're solo. So it's a very, very different experience and we really enjoy it and our customers are enjoying it. So we're not expecting to sell any more 914 powered M24s in the UK. Still using it in the M16, our uh, tandem open cockpit where the 914 is a really great fit. Um, but certainly, yes, the future, it's fuel injected and um, it's here, it's great. And uh, if I wanted to get into something like an M24, what's the sort of uh, buy-in price for that? Okay, so the M24 Plus we've got here. Um, now, with the M24 Plus, people tend not to underspec them. We don't sell many poverty spec aircraft, it's got to be said. And so the typical cost would be about £120,000 in the UK with the VAT paid and with a permit to fly. So that's the actual cost and all the options on that you'd actually want. So most of these are going out now with Dynon um, panels in them. Um, we've got electronic instrumentation, transponders, radios, all that good stuff. So bundled in that cost would be all those things you'd actually want to fly the aircraft. I'm here with uh, Rob Hughes, the CEO of the BMAA. Not only is he a great show, show for you, but it's also the weekend of the BMAA AGM. So what are the points you could be raising at the AGM and what are you looking forward to seeing here? Well, this is the opening of the flying season really officially for us. And what's really exciting this year is the 600 kilo market. It's now taken hold, and there's plenty of 600 kilos here, uh, where there were, were only a few last year. And we, the BMAA, are absolutely flying through 600 kilo approvals. We've now got 15 either new aeroplanes, like the one behind me, or modifications, approvals, such as the Sky Ranger 600. So 600 kilo is a big deal, and it's here, and we're really seeing it for the first time. Because you're kind of specialist with aeroplanes in Africa, aren't you? So this is probably targeted at that, but it will be, there's some applicability for the UK market too, isn't there? Absolutely. So what we do is we say this is for surveillance, 
humanitarian, agricultural, training and recreational. So from a training perspective, it's got the same rigidity as we would have had for an agricultural machine. And you can see how those features, they move away from the 600 kilogram category two seats. So it's a totally different market. But yes, there are people in the UK. For example, if you look at the seat pan, um, you know, we can take two 125 kilogram pilots on that. It's got the extra width for ladies' hips uh, because we encourage female pilots. Uh, I didn't know, as a 100, <laughs> as a 100 kilogram male, my width hips are about the same width as a 60 kilogram female. But also for people with disabilities, where getting in and out, ingress and egress is important. And I'll just go around this side and show what I think is the favorite move we've learned from somebody with disabilities. Um, you know, how do you get in? Now imagine you've got your doorpost there and they were like, well, this is how I would like to get in. And he literally, he went like this and he lay down. And we're like, we never thought about that. And then he was able to hoik his legs in and then to push. And of course, on a conventional aircraft, you can't do that. And so this, we feel, is one of our big innovation points. Uh, believe it or not, Cessna used to have these on the very early planes, and then they moved to seats. Um, people are wondering about pedals. The pedals are adjustable, the seats fixed, which helps. You've got 225 kilogram pilots. You don't want them moving their seats backwards and forwards on weight and balance. But from my point of view, as a lady pilot, when I started learning to fly, I realized that, you know, there was never a single airplane that I got into that my hips fit fitted in properly. So I just took it perhaps that women weren't designed to fly. So getting to the point of designing our own aeroplane, it's important to me that we incorporate all the needs for ladies as well, not just male pilots, but to be able to create that room that if a lady gets into a plane, they don't feel like they, it's not designed for them. So we're taking that into account to make sure they have the hips room to be able to sit in the plane and not feel like someone is infringing on their personal space. So that's been very important. And I think that is a very valid point. Go and look on a listing of aeroplanes. They all have shoulder width. You don't see hip width. I think over a thousand different specs I looked at, I found one other aircraft with a hip width. And that's really big if we want to be inclusive in aviation for gender, abilities, etc. We've got to look at that. Might we see something at the, um, the grassroots rally, maybe? You will see the cabin frame on this in four weeks. Oh, wow. At Cywell. You will see taxi tests uh, before this time next year. Amazing. Well, I really look forward to seeing that. Best of luck to you guys, and uh, hopefully we'll maybe be able to pop along to Pembrokeshire and see how you're getting on. You are always welcome. <laughs> the kettle is always on and Welsh cakes available. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you both. Thank you. Take care. If I wanted to get in at a real basic price, what's the other end of the spectrum? Okay, the other end of the spectrum would be the Magni M16 um, with the Rotax 914 engine. Again, in a very usable and uh, spec with the VAT and the permit, you're probably looking at about £80,000. It depends a little bit on the exchange rate because we actually price our aircraft in euros. Um, but yeah, around about £80,000 for one of those. Again, second hand, they're changing hands from £40,000 to £50,000 upwards. So, you know, in, in aviation terms, relatively affordable. Steve, thanks very much. Good luck with the approval and uh, we look forward to seeing uh, seeing you get, get that paperwork. Brilliant. Thank you very much. What's going to come up at the AGM? Uh, there's three main me messages that I'm pushing this year. Uh, we're in a period of great change, we believe, not just 600 kilo. First of all is airworthiness. We currently operate under BCAR Section S and even talking to CAA um, policy yesterday, uh, AASA are looking at bringing the Part 21 light system in and details are emerging more and more and it may be that we'll turn to a Part 21 light in the UK in the next 18 months which is a big change for microlighting. Also licensing, I sit on the CAA license review panel and it may also be there that CAA will introduce a PPL light and then a PPL uh, license, so PPL light being sub ko and PPL being ICAO. Again, another huge change for microlighting because it may well be that people will learn to fly in the lighter weight, cheaper, more economical microlights and then seamlessly transgress onto the full PPL later. And the third big topic at the AGM is electronic conspicuity. How does it affect us? What is going to be introduced and when are we going to have to start carrying it? Yeah. So part 21 lights, how is that going to affect microlights then? 
Uh, principally, and I don't have much detail yet, it will be of benefit to manufacturers because they will move to a declaratory airworthiness system rather than the, the heavily regulated one that we have in the UK at the moment. Meaning, for instance, this Delta jet that's behind me, they've had to go through A81 approval as a manufacturer and then BCAR Section S approval to, uh, for airworthiness standard. Instead, they would self-declare. There would be a system, a standard that they must meet and much like the French and much like the Americans in some uh, situations, the manufacturer would say, we have met your system and it would make their lives much, much easier to produce aircraft and therefore there'd be more aircraft available in the UK. So there's a chance we might even see things like the JMB VL3. Maybe. That one's an odd one, but maybe. <laughs> so, SSDR, single seat deregulated aircraft, You've mentioned that you've done a bit of looking into that, those aircraft. Uh, what have you found? Yeah, so we contacted the CAA and asked them for the information they hold because an SSDR is a registered aeroplane. The only thing different between an SSDR and a permit aeroplane is that it needs, doesn't need a permit of airworthiness, a certificate of airworthiness. Everything else is the same, still need a pilot license and the rest of it. So CAA have information. We asked them for that information. They said at the time, which was a couple of months ago, there were 728 SSDRs on the register which quite surprised us. So we as the BMAA looked more into those numbers and we split into aeroplanes that used to be permit and aeroplanes that have never been permit, so the new types of um, dragons and flybees and things like that. It's a 40-60 split, so the SSDR, SSDR fleet is about 40% ex-BMAA permit aircraft and about 60% new. So we delved even further to find that of the BMAA uh, ex-permit aircraft, most of them are quite old. 82 to 95 manufacturing years. So it's not a modern aeroplane reducing to one seat. It's more old aeroplanes coming back into flying. So that's increasing the whole fleet. That's quite a good thing, isn't it? For, for Michael Lighting with a capital M, it's wonderful because we are in the business of getting people flying. Um, we've also looked into the membership crossover with the BMAA. And we're pleased to say there's an awful lot of people who are voluntarily members of the BMAA. So we must be doing something right. Well, have a great show, Rob. Um, it's, great. It's, it's a wonderful day. Beautiful, hot and sunny. It's going to be a fantastic weekend. Thanks, Dave. Thanks very much. So, Popham 2023, how was it for you? It's been great. I mean, there's lots of, lots of people here. The weather's been pretty good. There's lots of aircraft. And of course, it's not just a show, a trade show. It's also a social event for lots of people. It's amazing. You can't go anywhere without people going, it's you. <laughs> well, you probably get that because you're, you're much more famous than I am. <laughs> <laughs> Someone came up to me and said, I, I'm the same one. You're the same one. I'm the same oh, no. one. Oh, no. At least, they, at least they, well, someone, someone uh, well, lots of people have said, where's Ian? Yes, He's yeah. in Canada. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, no, um, a fantastic fantastic event and great to see loads of aeroplanes and like you say loads of people the weather surprisingly better than everyone imagined it would be yep and we bumped into both the boss of uh, the ceos of both the bmaa and, and the, the LAA. LAA. yeah which is tremendous and you know, uh, bmaa doing a great job with 600 kg fed says um, laa got lots of momentum and hopes for 600 kg in the future as well yep. um, see how simon gets on I'm sure that's top of his list I'm, yeah, I would guess it, it really is. Um, lots of uh, and manufacturers really positive um, yep. and so much when you think that there's, there's a lot here from 70, the sub 70 category through to 600 kg and yep. lots of innovation, lots of fantastic stuff around. Yep, it's also the, we not, you know, mustn't forget that it's the UK debut for the uh, Sky Leader 400 and 600. Yes, and I really like them. They, they're really nice machines. They they're, are. They're yeah. solid, robust, and they, I think they're targeting, certainly with the 400, targeting the flight school market. Yep. And you go, that's that's an airplane that's made for it. Yeah, so. absolutely tough. Yeah, not too, not too expensive. No. Very good. Yeah, but, yeah. Well, um, we're back here in August. Back here in August, obviously, for Grassroots Rally. And it's interesting that the, um, the Microlite Trade Fair learned from Grassroots Rally by having parking area behind all the stands. And I think it's it's great for it. It is. It really worked out well. Yeah, yeah. fantastic. Oh, well, well, I guess we'll, so we'll, I'll see you back here in, uh, in August. Yes, right. <laughs> Take care. Cheers. Clear prop. Like, comment, subscribe. Thanks for watching. <laughs>